Hi everyone, Alex Tardy here, Meteorologist National Weather Service. Hope you're enjoying the webinars. Let us know. Uh, we're looking at more Santa Ana winds. That's probably not what you wanted to hear though. Uh, and high fire danger. It could be a prolonged event next week. Uh, may even continue through the entire week. We do have a little hope for precipitation late January. Okay, so the driest start to the water year, you've heard about that. That is significant. That's record breaking. Um, we're going to have a quiet weekend, so time to think about this, but we could have a long weekend uh, to think about a long week of Santa Ana winds and very dry conditions. So what are we looking at? Santa Ana winds are offshore northeast flow starting up Monday, continuing through Wednesday. I think they may continue beyond Wednesday, um, but they will have a peak on Tuesday into Wednesday. There is uncertainty for precipitation. That'll be the end of January. We'll talk about that a little bit as well. So we showed this before, but Santa Ana winds are very common in January. And that's typically when we see the strongest Santa Ana winds too. But so far this January, we've seen four of them already with five coming up. So Santa Ana wind is a wind that goes up and over the mountains or in between the mountains. So it gets magnified, enhanced by the mountains. That's what makes them so unique and so powerful and destructive in Southern California because of our beautiful, huge coastal mountains that go up to 11,000 feet. So Santa Ana wind is basically blowing high to low pressure, cold air in the desert to the slightly warmer ocean. And unfortunately, they're magnified by the mountains. This is the general weather pattern. So the storm track goes by to our east. So we're on the dry, windy side of any storm. And behind that is cold air, which is dense and creates the high pressure cell high to low so the atmosphere tries to balance things out and that blows it towards the south and it's enhanced over our mountain areas as shown here now when you look at the history of all santa annas i looked at for example a 10-year history it's the same weather pattern even a couple decades ago so here we are in 2025 um, this same weather pattern high to low is what creates the offshore Santa Ana winds. So the winds blow from desert to the coast. You're bringing the desert all the way to the ocean and, and that is what makes it so dry and makes it so dangerous for fire weather conditions. Now the opposite of a Santa Ana wind is an onshore flow, a west wind, uh, but that itself causes problems on the other side of the mountain range as shown here. That's typically the Mojave Desert and the Coachella Valley, for example. We are not seeing this weather pattern now. What's the weather pattern been? So over the past several months, the average weather pattern has looked like this. So the jet stream just keeps going by to our north. Even when in December it dipped into Northern California, it was still going by the north. So we've got this jet stream storm track that's been displaced to the north missing us almost entirely not just one storm but this is an average of months of data since october 1st so recently in january why so many santa annas uh well the pattern has gotten worse it's amplified it buckled so now we have this huge roadblock where storms are not only making it to California, they're not even making it into the Pacific Northwest. They're being pushed way up into Alaska and British Columbia. That goes up into Canada, draws down very cold air. It's just basically scraping all the cold air from Canada, drawing itself in, in the form of those Arctic blasts. But Arctic blasts are cold air, so they produce high pressure at the surface. That creates your high to low pressure offshore flow. So the past two weeks are what's shown here averaged. and it's been dry. Um, now my map here is showing less than 5% all over Southern California. San Diego, we, we can't get any worse, 
uh, we're in first place for driest start to a rainy season. Look at far northern California because of those atmospheric rivers in December. They're still above normal. Uh, we're chewing away on that. Uh, you can see now we've got brown all the way into Tahoe. And Southern California we really can't get drier. When you rank all the years, okay, and you look at different stations, you can see a lot of them are number one. So number one driest, similar to San Diego. Take a look at this. So how much precipitation are we missing? So in San Diego, we average 10 inches and we're missing about four inches. Now, when you go further north, it's a larger number because they've had the same amount of rain or lack of rain. And so you're missing five or six inches in the LA basin, for example, and even more in our mountains. What weather pattern is coming to us? Well, it's the same weather pattern. So everything's blowing from west to east into British Columbia, pulling down that cold air, Arctic air, and sliding by to the east. Now, where that low pressure in the jet stream lines up with the high pressure at the surface is critical to how strong the Santa Ana winds are, because Santa Ana winds are driven by that cold air. So it looks like we have a little dip in the jet stream on Tuesday, so that could be our first peak in stronger winds. And then behind that is more high pressure, more cold air. Look at the Arctic outbreak for the Northeast, uh, very significant. Then we go into midweek on Wednesday. The pattern hasn't changed. Another dip in the jet stream over the Great Basin. So more high pressure, more cold air will follow. Um, when you get that white line dipping closer to us, combined with that offshore flow from the high pressure, that's when you can see some of your most powerful Santa Ana winds. Okay, what about the rain? Could we have rain? What would cause the rain? Well, we basically break down the weather pattern, at least temporarily. We sag that storm track and we put it into central or northern California as shown here. Now, this is just a forecast for late January, but there is some hope of getting this, what we called west to east zonal flow and at least giving us a shot for some rain. Now, the chance for Santa Ana winds are shown here. The probability is shown here. You can see Initially, the greatest probability is Monday night and Tuesday for most locations. The winds we're looking at are shown here. So it's the normal areas where the air is funneled through the mountains and magnified, kind of like when you put your finger on a water hose. The yellow areas are greater than 40 miles per hour. So those are going to be critical areas for red flag conditions. The air is going to be really dry. It's, it's already been dry, but we're talking about humidity below 10% uh, over almost all areas and approaching the coast. So just a recap of what a fire weather watch is compared to red flag warning. So fire weather watches come before red flag warnings. This is some of the base criteria. So you, you can't just have one of these. So if an area is in a red flag, what we're saying is you're having winds at least gusting 35 miles per hour, low humidity at least below 20%, the dry vegetation, and, and you have that at the same time in those areas. And that's what constitutes a red flag warning. But the fire weather watch comes before to give you more heads up. The vegetation across Southern California, even in our mountains, is near record low levels. And that will not improve over the next seven days with no rain and continued continued drying, like having a blow dryer on the mountains in the train uh, with the next round of Santa Ana winds. The outlook, not promising for much change until late in January. So the first part of the outlook here goes through January 27th. Next slide. That's when we have our first opportunity for some precipitation. It's that potential dip in the jet stream. And you can see it brings a chance of precipitation over a large part of the country because that whole jet stream would contain uh, one or two storms moving across the region. 
All right, everyone, be safe. Check for the latest alerts. Okay, check to see on our webpage, weather.gov, if you are in that red flag area. Um, and that means dangerous fire weather conditions if there is ignition. Otherwise, if there's not a fire start, you still have impacts from those winds, like down trees and branches and so forth. Um, if you want more information, latest information, X, Facebook, you can check out on there and we put more slides there as we get more information leading up to and closer to the Santa Ana wind event. All right, everyone, stay tuned uh, for more updates and be safe.